if you love name exploit then please consider leaving a super thanks in the comments of this video it's a great way to make a one-time donation to the channel and help support name explain the English language is in constant evolution, with old words falling out of favour and new words gaining prominence. When a word gains enough momentum and is entrenched in the public knowledge, it more often than not gets added to a dictionary. I'm sure you'll know the drill by now. I've been making these videos at the start of each year since 2019, making this the fifth entry in this video series. 2022 was another explosive year for language, with the Oxford English Dictionary, which is my dictionary of choice though others are available, updating their dictionary each quarter of 2022, leading to 2,850 words being added to it. Of course, we can't highlight all of these words, but please do go look into them for yourself. But I have looked through all of these words added to the OED in 2022 and found 10 new words which I found of particular interest. Some of them you may have heard of, while others might be completely alien to yourself. So, to wrap things up for Name Explains New Year Week and to finally put 2022 to rest, let's look at 10 words added to the dictionary in 2022. First off, we have the wonderful adjective of dinosauric. Like most seven-year-olds trapped in an adult body, I love dinosaurs. And if you couldn't tell by the sound of this word, it does indeed link to the prehistoric beasts. Dinosauric is your go-to adjective to refer to something being dinosaur-like, or as the OED define it, of or relating to a dinosaur or dinosaurs, characteristic of or resembling a dinosaur. What this new entry into the OED highlights, however, to us is just how long it can take some words to finally be added into the mix. The earliest use of the term dinosauric is actually recorded all the way back in 1888. It took over 100 years for the OED to finally add it to their own book of words. As the how this word was formed, it's pretty easy to figure out. It's just the word dinosaur, which in turn comes from Greek words meaning terrible lizard, and the popular ick suffix used often to make adjectives, as we see with words like scientific and economic. So it's definitely not the most creative of words, but it's a pretty cool word that made its way into the dictionary this year. One of the more strange additions to the OED in 2022, however, has to be the addition of the term Annie Oakley, which yes, while it is two words, is considered one word or term by the OED and is a single entry. Not only is it strange that this unassuming, feminine-sounding English first and last name combo has made its way into the dictionary, what's stranger is what it means, as the definition of an Annie Oakley is a complimentary ticket or pass to a theatrical or sporting event. There's a lot of explaining with this one. First off, we should mention the real Annie Oakley. She was a sharpshooter born in 1860 who did impressive feats of shooting during Wild West shows put on by one Buffalo Bill, an American soldier turned showman. So how did this sharpshooter's name become linked with free tickets? Well, according to Oakley, it was the baseball player of Ban Johnson who started referring to free tickets as Annie Oakleys. He called them this because the hole punctured into a ticket to show it had been accepted looked like the precise bullet holes that Annie would create during her Wild West shows. It's a strange one for sure, and the term seems to primarily be a US thing and isn't too commonplace anymore. But nonetheless, it's another word that got added to the OED in 2022. One word that caught my attention in regards to being added to the dictionary in 2022 was none other than the word soysage. I hadn't personally heard this word before, but I immediately knew what it meant. It's a term for vegetarian or vegan sausages made with soy instead of meat, or as the OED themselves say, a type of vegetarian, now typically vegan sausage made with soy protein instead of meat. The etymology of this one is pretty easy to figure out. It's a clear combination of the words soy and sausage. This one is interesting for a couple of reasons. First off, it highlights just how much popularity veganism and vegetarianism has gained in recent years. But it also highlights another big issue facing the meat-free food nomenclature world. There's been this ongoing debate about what meat-free alternatives should actually be called. Like, what defines a sausage? Is it the meat? So, should a version of no meat in it be called a sausage at all? Or is it defined by the shape or taste or texture of it? Meaning a food can be called a sausage regardless of what it's actually made of. It's a really interesting debate and the word sausage is a great alternative for those who believe that meat-free sausages shouldn't be called sausages. What's also interesting is how old this word is. People might think veganism is a relatively new word, but this term was actually first recorded all the way back in 1943. In the previous two years of 2020 and 2021, the COVID-19 pandemic played a large role in the creation of new language. 2022 was a much 
less COVID centric year. However, it still did have an impact on words. Noticeably, unjabbed made its way into the OED. Jabbed is a term meaning vaccinated. So unjabbed is a term meaning not vaccinated. It can be used as a noun or adjective and is defined by the OED as that has not undergone vaccination, unvaccinated. This term gained popularity in the last few years to reflect those who chose not to be vaccinated against COVID-19. Two for one this time, because I was pleasantly surprised to see that the terms of man them and gal them have been added to the OED. These are very much British English slang terms, meaning a group of men and a group of women respectively. They're not entirely of British origin however. They're actually of Caribbean roots and started being used amongst British African Caribbean people before gaining a wider use too, being popularized in places like Twitter and in music. The terms are a combination of man and gal with them, D-E-M, which is a variation of them, T-H-E-M. So that means they mean things like them men and them girls before being adapted into the words they are today. It's great seeing slang like this getting recognition in the OED. A really fun word that made its way into the dictionary in 2022 was the word of Boycott. This is of course an adaptation of the much older word of boycott, replacing the boy with buy. It is also something of an opposite to the term boycott. Boycott means to avoid something. Boycott is quite literally the opposite. OED defines it as a form of protest in which participants encourage using a particular company, business, etc., often as a counter reaction to a boycott or as a protest against another company. In later use, the fact of deliberately choosing to buy from a company or business due to its ethical standards. So a boycott more or less simply means to buy something to stick it to someone else. It's always fun when words get an opposite form you might not know about. And while only added in 2022, the earliest recording of the term comes from 1940. Also slight tangent, but I've always wanted to talk about the term of boycott itself, as it actually derives from the last name of one Charles Boycott, an Irish land agent who was brought in by a landowner to try and evict tenants who were revolting. Due to this, Charles Boycott found himself to not be too popular in Ireland and found himself isolated from everyone, aka he was boycotted. I am however beyond excited to share with you all that Fluffer Nutter has made its way into the OED. If you haven't heard of this fun sounding word, that may be because it's primarily used in the USA. It's the name of a type of sandwich of all things. As the OED defines it, a Fluffer Nutter is a sandwich filled with peanut butter and a marshmallow spread or creme. Also more fully, Fluffer Nutter sandwich. While I've had the pleasure of eating marshmallow fluff while in the USA and live primarily on peanut butter, the fluff Fluff and nutter is something I haven't had the pleasure of just yet, but this definition should help us understand that ridiculous name. The fluffer at the start derives from the fluff brand of marshmallow spread, synonymous with this food product, and the nutter relates to the peanut butter used too. Why they included the extra ERs in them is probably just to make this name sound more silly and fun. I imagine fluff and nutter sandwiches get eaten primarily by children, so would enjoy that silly name. Fluffer and nutter are separate words also in the OED too, and have completely different meanings. Check what a fluffer is at your own risk, I suppose. Something else I found interesting was the fact that merch was added to the OED in 2022. It is of course a shortening of merchandise, but has become a word unto itself. What's interesting about this one, however, is that merch has taken on much more of a life than just being a shortening of merchandise. Merch ties directly to things like YouTube and popular culture. As the OED defines it, goods to be bought and sold, merchandise, specifically products used to promote a particular performer, film or the like, or endorsed by or associated with a particular celebrity, event, etc. Merch has become a mainstay of modern popular culture, and it can be easy to forget that the term started life as a short form of a much, much older word. Finally, for our last few entries, I'd like to highlight some words from other languages that have made their way into the OED. The first one of those being banati. This is actually an Irish English term, but derives from the Irish language and means the female head of a family or household, a housewife, a landlady, or hostess, and comes from the Irish banati, meaning woman of the house. It's a term that dates back to 1825 and has finally made its way into the OED. Finally, we have the term of dalad 
Lingala, which made its way into the OED in 2022. This is an East African term seemingly linked with Tanzania and is defined as a van or minibus that carries passengers for a fare as part of an informal transport system in Tanzania. So this is simply a fun little name for a bus. As to where it came from, we have a few ideas. It's believed to be Swahili in origin before being borrowed into English and is thought to derive from the drivers of these buses shouting dollar dollar to passengers to let them know the fare, which would be a dollar or so. Dollar dollar became dala dala and then made its way into the OED. But there you have it, 10, well 11 I suppose, words that made their way into the dictionary in 2022. For some of these words it was a long time coming and for others they shot into popularity in this year. There will be a link down below where you can see all the OED's updates from this year. Let me know what words I missed out on that you like. And of course, let me know what words you think will finally get their big break in the year 2023 and finally be added to the dictionary. Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.